Okay, so I'm supposed to be here. Uh, I'm here uh, to uh, to to give you some uh, information about uh, augmentative biocontrol, and uh, I'm going to uh, give you definitions of what we call augmentative biocontrol for this meeting. Uh, and I would not be able to speak about uh, business models, so uh, I let the people uh, uh, coming after me. Uh, speak about that. Okay. Uh, augmentative biocontrol is a direct introduction of uh, biocontrol agents from an exogenous source into, into the cropping system. And it's based on the repeated introduction of uh, these uh, biocontrol solutions into uh, agricultural crops. So the objective uh, and, of course, uh, augmentative biocontrol solutions, as uh, Thibault already said, uh, 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 typically mass-produced in commercial structures. And the objectives of, uh, of using uh, biocontrol as uh, an augmentative uh, strategy is to uh, first quickly reduce the pest or the pathogen population present and it should be done in short or even medium term. And then the, obje the second objective is to maintain a low level of infestation or infection throughout the growing season. So what are the biocontrol solutions available uh, at present? Uh, as Thibault already said, macroorganisms like uh, insects, mites, uh, entomopathogenic nematodes are uh, some of these solutions. And uh, these microorganisms emerged a long time ago, probably in China, around 300 years before Christ. But the, the, uh, 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 an, important, an important milestone uh, took place in 1926 when a, a tomato growers uh, use uh, 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 a, a parasite insect, Encarcia formosa, against uh, uh, Trialorodes vaporarium. And after that, there was a very fast growing of, this te of these techniques after the 1970s. At present, there are about between 230 and 350 species of uh, invertebr invertebrate biocontrol agents through the world, uh, including 90% of arthropods and less than 10% of nematodes. And the market is uh, dominated by a low number of species, uh, almost 12. Uh, these microorganisms are used in uh, most crops, but particularly in uh, greenhouse vegetables and against pests like trips, white flies, spider mites, or aphids. Another biocontrol solution available uh, as an augmentative strategy are microorganisms. They can be viruses, bacteria, fungi, or mice. <laughs> A strange noise <laughs> coming from outside. Uh, and uh, this uh, strategy started in, uh, in the late 90s when uh, Mechnikov, uh, a Russian, uh, used a fungus, Metarhizium anisoplia, to control beetles in, uh, in various crops. And then now we uh, have almost more than 200 strains of microbes that are uh, registered throughout the world, and it's probably more. And it includes 91 that are registered against plant pathogens. And these uh, registered microorganisms are limited to a small number of species that dominate the market, such, la, such as Trichoderma, Bacillus, and Pseudomonas. Uh, these microorganisms are used against soil-borne and foliar, foliar diseases in uh, many crops, and again, especially in greenhouse vegetables. 
and uh, they are also used against pests, against caterpillars, white fly and trips, for example, using uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, Bacillovirus, or, or some fungi. Other uh, substances that can be used as, let's say, augmentative uh, strategy are natural substances because they are used throughout the growing season. Uh, and use of plant extracts uh, uh, dates uh, uh, back to uh, 3,000 uh, years ago. There are either purified compounds like uh, acid, uh, pelagonic acid used as a bioherbicide or complex substances like uh, uh, plant extracts or essential oils. At present, there are a low number of officially registered substances, and these substances are used against either pests or disease. And finally, semi-chemicals. We can consider semi-chemicals as a, an augmentative, uh, an augmentative uh, 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 solution uh, because the idea of Saimo chemicals is to uh, put uh, the, the chemicals every year in the growing uh, crop. So uh, the history of uh, Saimo chemicals began in, uh, in the late 19th century with the observation of uh, insect attraction by uh, jean Rifabre. Fabre. And at present, there are several hundred pheromones identified and used against uh, crop insect pests. Most of these uh, uh, biocontrol, uh, augmentative biocontrol uh, tools are uh, submitted to uh, regulation. And Aura already explained that. Uh, for example, microorganisms and natural substances are subject to a regulation process, at least in Europe, in the States, and in most, in most countries. So you have then registered, what we call registered products. So you can use, as a farmer, only these registered products. For microorganisms, it's a bit different. They are not subject to the same regulatory uh, uh, process. For example, in France, if you want to import non-native insects from uh, outside the territory, outside the country, you, uh, you had to request an authorization to uh, ANSES. But if you want to use a native organisms, you can use it without any request. Okay, before going to the business models, some technical challenges that remain for these biocontrol agents. Of course, uh, we absolutely need to increase the number of biocontrol solutions available. They are not enough. It doesn't uh, go through all uh, the demands. Uh, we have also to improve the mass production and the stability of marketed products. To improve also the formulation, and in particular for active substance and uh, microorganisms. And also the resource implementation for macroorganisms. We need to develop knowledge of the factors that determine the efficacy of biocontrol solutions in order to use them more successfully. And that's a very important point. Actually, we don't know how, you, how to use them. And as Thibault and Aura said, we try to integrate biocontrol in our classical, sorry, Thibault, five minutes? Okay. To our classical uh, agricultural system, maybe we, we have to change the agricultural system to integrate our biocontrol solutions. Uh, we also have to assess uh, the ability of pests and pathogens to become resistant to biocontrolled uh, solutions. We have the experience of pesticides. We know that uh, 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 pathogens and uh, uh, pests are able to develop resistance uh, to this kind of uh, products. Why not developing resistance to these biocontrol solutions? And of course, evaluate non-target effect, for example, the specificity of these products and the dispersal ability. What about the business model? Uh, actually, producers of augmentative biocontrol solutions are grouped together in the International Biocontrol Manufacturer Association. And Flora is here to 
explain it, what, it, what is it, IBMA, and it's uh, more than 200 companies. And the commercial strategy of, uh, uh, that uh, goes to the development of biocontrol uh, agents are quite similar to that of conventional protection tools. And there is a growing involvement of major agrochemical companies in the, in the, in the development of these companies. Are there examples of other business models? Well, we will see that now, uh, and we will invite uh, three speakers in, in, the, in, in this afternoon. Uh, Ranajit Bandiopadai, who is going to speak about the scaling of LifeSafe in Africa, commercialization models and lessons. Andres Perez, who is working in Brazil in the company called Ecotrix, and who is going to present us uh, uh, this company, who works on augmentative biocontrol. And finally, we will finish by Claire Baker-Sons uh, from the US, and she will speak about the Toothpick Project, regulation, manufacturing, and distribution for Striga biocontrol in Africa. And that's it for me, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mark. Do you have some questions for Mark? was so clear. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want questions? <laughs> Florent, a question? They are, they are, they are. Thank you. Just I, will, I want to make sure that I will understand uh, augmentative biological control as you presented it. I think it includes classical and inundative and augmentative because for me... Yeah, it's... Yes. It's augmentative in a large sense, yeah. Yeah, we put all, all that within the, the same world. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, thank you. That's why I give this, this presentation, to explain you what we call augmentative during this uh, Okay, this so session. now augmentative includes all the other types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inundative, okay. inoculative, and that. And inundative, okay, thank you. I, I got a microphone already, so. Uh, <laughs> Just had it in, in my pocket. Um, well, thanks for this really nice overview of uh, augmentative biocontrol. Um, the only, I, I just wanted to add one uh, uh, aspect. You said that augmentative biocontrol uh, intends to quickly reduce pest and, and pathogen problems and then keep it at a, at a low level. Uh, but augmentative biocontrol, that, that is the curative use of augmentative biocontrol. But you can also use augmentative biocontrol preventatively, which means you establish your uh, biocontrol agents before the pests uh, occur. And uh, in that case, you actually don't have to bring down the pest, but you actually prevent the pest from establishing. Thank you, Felix, for this remark. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for your good presentation. Um, I had a remark about uh, augmentative biocontrol uh, when you mentioned exogenous. So introducing an exogenous biocontrol product in the cropping system. It depends what we d define as exo exogenous because many biocontrol agents, they are already occurring uh, in the region. Yep. And they are just isolated, and the strain is uh, produced and uh, applied on the crop. Yeah, you're, so you're, you're right. The species, as you said, are common uh, trichoderma, bacillus, and so on. E even insects. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also uh, you pointed that uh, there are only a few species uh, registered. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, there are not that many species that are uh, registered, and the new ones, the new strains of microbes, for example, they are belonging often to the species already registered. So it's a really a, a problem uh, for the innovation to reach uh, registration and then reach the market. Yep. Yes. Thank you, Flora, for this comment. Okay, Thibault, it's time to go 
to move to the next yeah. Let's presentation.